Hello, loved ones. See you, Elder here. I want to follow up the video I made about finding your functional threshold heart rate with this video that I want to focus on dealing with. How do you train with a heart rate monitor? I'm going to do additional videos about training with a power meter and finding your functional threshold power. But I wanted to go ahead and do this so that for those of you who now have found your functional thre threshold heart rate, what do you do with it? It's a very technical video. It's going to be very short, but it's straightforward. And when I do the production of it, I will put a screenshot in there that you can either save on your phone or whatever device you have so you can always refer to the charts. And I'm, I'm looking at the charts here because I don't carry these numbers in my head. Um, I use the numbers from uh, Dr. Uh, Andrew Kogan, the same guy who wrote the book that I recommended in the power meter video that I did. And if you don't remember that, I will put a link for the power meter video that you can look at. They wrote a book that shows you how to work with a power meter. They also subscribe to using the power meter in conjunction with a heart rate monitor if you have both. But for those of you who just have a heart rate monitor like me right now, Here's how I train with it. There are seven zones that Dr. Kogan recommends. Um, now in this column on the chart, if you look at the fourth column from the left, the percentage of threshold HR, those are the numbers and the percentages that we're gonna be using. If you look at zone one, level one is active recovery. That's your rest. Level two is endurance. That's your long steady distance. Level three is tempo. It's between that and lactive threshold that they call the sweet spot. Level four is your ceiling that I talked about in the other video. Uh, level five is VO2 max. And level six and seven, we do not use a heart rate monitor for because six is anaerobic capacity and seven is neuromuscular power. Those are very intense efforts that are between five seconds and up to like 15 to 30 seconds. So the heart rate monitor does not have a chance to register anything. Uh, you can see the RPE column out there. That's your percentage, your rate of perceived exertion. And you can see in the last two, six and seven, where it says maximal, and then in six, the RPE column says greater than seven. This is what I'm going to be discussing. And you can make a screenshot, print this, whatever, and keep that. That's what I use to derive the zones for training. You find your functional threshold heart rate, and then you take 68% of that number. So let's say, for example, you go out, you ride, and you're out of breath, your leg turns to jello, and you're looking at the number, and it says, say, 168 beats per minute, or whatever it is. You take that number, and you multiply that by 68%. So when you're training less than 68% of say the 165 theoretical number that we're using, that's the zone for your active recovery. So Friday, if you're tired, you're getting ready for the weekend, active recovery, you, you got a chance to ride and you just wanna get out there and stay below that number. 68% times 165. You guys, you do the math, whatever your functional threshold. As long as you're below that percentage, you're allowing your body to rejuvenate your muscles, flush out the toxins. And this is actually a zone for warming down after a hard ride or beginning your warm up to go do a hard ride. You don't stay in that zone for your entire warm up. You start there and then you bump it up, especially if you're going to do a hard ride. But on the way after a hard ride, you want 10 or 15 minutes in this zone below 68% to help you recover for the next day. Because that little spin will flush out the toxins. So you can do that after the end of a ride or you can do that on a day off if you have, have a chance to ride. The next zone is the endurance zone. This is the one where we talk about long steady distance, building your base. That's between 69%, there's 1% above, 1 above that 68. 69 to 83% of your functional threshold heart rate. That's your endurance zone.
That's what you train. You do those numbers and that when you, you make sure on your heart rate monitor when you're riding, those are the numbers that pop. Some of the Garmin's and stuff will let you set alarms when you below it or above. I don't use those because when you stop at a red light or for a stop sign and your heart rate drops, it just beeps too much. It's annoying. So I just know what numbers I want to do and I don't worry about it going below it when I stop momentarily. But once I'm riding and moving again, I get it up in that zone. It's a good range. My range is 119 to 145. So it's a good enough range to where it's not hard to stay in that zone. That's your endurance zone. And of course, these, are, these zones are part of your training micro cycle. You got to have a training program. And if you don't, you may want to get with somebody or read up on it or get with a coach that can pull one together for you. So, so every day you go out, when I talked about it in my other videos, where you got to hit these zones, that's what I mean. The next zone is called tempo. This is 84 to 94% of your functional threshold heart rate. That's your tempo zone. That's the zone is a little harder than endurance, but it's, it's lower than like your time trial pace per se. Tempo zone. So uh, the other video I made where we're in a breakaway and I said I was 15 beats below my time trial pace, that was my tempo zone. A tempo zone usually you train there between two and a half up to maybe six, seven hours. It's, it's a zone that you can carry for a long time, you know. Um, so it's not something that's detrimental, but it's not the only zone you want to stay in. The next zone I want to talk about is 95% to 105% of your functional threshold heart rate. This zone is your, your ceiling the lactate threshold zone. This is a zone that allows you to push your ceiling up. And it's not fun to be in this zone. It takes a lot of focus. And that's the whole point of having a heart rate monitor. If you took the time to buy it, you gotta go on certain days and say, today I'm fresh, I wanna go ahead and push my ceiling. And this kind of a workout is anywhere from 10 minutes to 60 minutes. These are the kind of workouts where, um, similar to like when you're trying to find your functional threshold heart rate. This is the same zone where your legs get near the ceiling where they start tightening up. So it's not a zone that you spend all your time in, but it's a very effective zone for building your, your threshold power. The next zone is greater than 106% of functional threshold. This is the VO2 max. So if you're <clears throat> your threshold was 165. You're going to be going in the 170s then. That's when you really increase your oxygen capacity. Okay? So it's very, very effective training. It's anywhere from three to eight minutes of work in these zones, in that zone. The next zone, we don't use heart rate for these zones. This is uh, zone, zone five, which, uh, I mean, zone six, sorry. Anaerobic capacity. The reason why we don't use heart rate for that, heart rate needs time to register what you're doing. And in these zones, you're working in anaerobic capacity. That's when you're doing sprints and stuff like that. So it's 30 seconds to like two minutes. The heart rate doesn't have enough time to reflect how hard you're going. It starts to come and by then you're done with the workout. Okay. So you, you don't, you, heart rate is not applicable in, the, in this zone. The, the final zone that he recommends here, zone seven, is the zone where you're working on neuromuscular power. Heart rate, again, is not applicable here. This is more of a maximal effort. This is anywhere from five to like 15 seconds. That's when you, you just, you put it in a gear to where, let's say there's a gap and the breakaway is going away and you just put the afterburners in. You know, you can't do that too long, but you put the afterburners in like when I attacked that day, when I opened that initial gap, that's the kind of power, that's full gas. So heart rate means nothing, you know, and you've got to train like that. It's five to 15 seconds, like a maximum sprint in a way, okay? So I will, I will post the, uh, the zones out there. Now, 
The zones are only going to be effective if you take the time to find your functional threshold heart rate like I talked about in that video. And then you do the math. I keep my zones on a board. I, put, I keep it on a board so every morning I get up, I see those numbers. So even though I've been doing it for a while, it's nice to see because when my threshold changes, I recalculate those zones. You want to keep them to where they're familiar. So as I head out the door, I know I'm doing zone two and I just look at the numbers. You know, when I'm going to do the group ride, well, anything goes, so it doesn't really matter. But you, you, you want to keep it somewhere where you see it all the time, so it becomes so familiar that you not, you just know your zones. You know that when you see 120 beats per minute on the heart rate monitor, you'll know, oh, I'm in this zone. But you familiarize yourself by keeping it somewhere visible. So every morning I get up, I'm having my, my co hot cocoa or drinking some juice in the kitchen, whatever, it's on the board, and I can just look at it all the time and get to know it. So I wanted to quickly go over that. Now, you need to have a weekly schedule where you got Monday through Friday. I mean, uh, Monday through Sunday is how I do mine. Monday through Sunday to where you know each day which zones and what kind of workout you're going to do. And if you don't have that, you need to get with a coach or do some research online, put together something on your own. But you got to have a daily schedule that as you head out the door, you've got a plan. You know, don't go kill yourself on Friday doing intervals and then go with a group on Saturday. You'll be dead. Your legs will be too tired. So you got to know what you're doing and when you're doing it and how to recover. And so I just wanted to quickly touch on that. But that's how you train with a heart rate monitor. And it's very effective. The two zones where I said they weren't applicable, you don't have to have a power meter for that to work. When you're going balls out, you're going balls out. You don't need any, any tool to tell you that you're going balls out. You know, you know. So post your comments and questions below. I just wanted to make this quickly before I start focusing on uh, power meter training. And I wanted to wrap up the heart rate training part. Let me know what I may have missed and let me know what else you want to see. But when, when you, if you're still having questions about specific training and how to train, you want to get with a coach. I train a lot of people remotely. You don't have to have somebody local, but you, you want to pay for that service and so that you can really improve, especially if you're planning on competing. So with that, be safe on the roads and don't let anything stop you from riding.